We are going to start today's show off with a story that is making headlines across college football regarding helmet communications. More specifically, the security of a, the in-helmet coach-to-player in-game communication systems during Power 4 college football games this season being on unencrypted frequencies, raising the question of whether or not they had been compromised. Texas Tech Athletic Director Kirby Hokut raised the issue after learning the helmet communications were unencrypted and accessible to anyone with a scanner and knowledge of how to locate the frequency. So let's bring in ESPN.com writer Max Olson. What's the latest on this, Max? Yeah, Victoria, the latest is the Big 12 just released a statement that they have completed their review into their conference games and have determined there's no evidence that any of their games were impacted by uh, common communication issues and, and any concerns around uh, people accessing that. Now, Kirby Hocutt, the Texas Tech Athletic Director, requested that review and specifically of Texas Tech's last two games against Baylor and TCU um, to ensure there was no integrity issues with those games. Kirby Hilkett has not made any allegations that those teams did anything nefarious. However, there is concern on the Texas Tech side that members of the conference knew about these vulnerabilities for the past few weeks and did not immediately bring it to their fellow athletic directors. Now, how realistic is the possibility of someone being able to access these communications, Max? Yeah, it's, it's a tricky question. Um, you, you need to have very specific knowledge. And, and look, I understand the, the first thing people think of is, is this signal stealing 2.0. Mm -hmm. I think there's an important distinction to make there. Um, when, when in my conversations with, with Big 12 uh, coaches and uh, staffers, they, there's skepticism that there, there's concern about the security, no doubt, but there is skepticism that an opponent who access their frequencies could gain a big competitive advantage because of the time between plays. Uh, if you had access to this frequency, then you'd be able to hear, for example, the communication between coach to quarterback, but you have to be able to decode the play call and effectively communicate that to your defense before the time uh, of the snap. And so there's skepticism uh, and, and coaches I've talked to do not believe they've been victimized by this. However, you can't say that it's impossible. After exiting early at Wisconsin with an injury, Penn State quarterback Drew Aller practiced Wednesday and participated in a variety of drills that indicated he is taking positive steps towards being available come Saturday against Ohio State. Head coach James Franklin spoke to reporters on the status of his QB on Wednesday. At, at this stage, um, no, no new information for you guys, game time decisions, um, but so far so good and getting uh, getting both Bo and Drew a ton of reps in practice. All right, game time decision. We'll be watching very closely, but let's do a tale of the tape and see which, which team has an edge in this Ohio State-Penn State matchup. So let's break down a couple of key positions and start with the quarterback, Sam. So the quarterback position, this is a little bit interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Because Bo Perbula may start, yeah. who knows, it may be Drew Aller. But I'm actually going to give the edge to Ohio State and to Will Howard. And there's been a lot okay. of talk about Will Howard and how successful he's been. But statistically, he's actually putting up better numbers so far than Drew Aller. Passing yards and also touchdowns. And also, we kind of have a little bit of the critique of maybe uh, his ability to throw the ball downfield. But what thing that I think Will Howard does, a, does an exceptional job of is using his legs as well. So we can run the ball in the red zone, run the ball even in the high red zone. So his ability to pass it and run it, I think, gives Ohio State the edge with the question mark at Penn State. Mm, okay, well, that's positive for Penn State for sure. All right, what about receivers and tight ends, Trevor? Well, the receivers and tight ends, tight end goes to Penn State mm. in Tyler Warren. I mean, he had a breakout game against USC, yeah. 17 catches, 224 yards. And the guy is 6'6". 250 some pounds. I mean, the guy is massive, and so he is a matchup nightmare no matter what he does. I expect Ohio State to try to cover this guy. Mm -hmm. well, who do you cover him with? <laughs> because if somebody's nimble enough to stay with him, he won't be big enough to stop him from beasting the ball. If somebody is big enough to stop him from beasting the ball, he'll just run right by him. And so I think from a tight end standpoint, you've got Penn State with the edge. However, the receiver standpoint, this is where Ohio State has the biggest edge of any position group on the field. Carniel Tate and Amika Abuka yeah. would be the, the number one wide receiver on any other team. But Jeremiah Smith mm. makes those monster catches. Well, let's take a look at the context in which he does it that makes him so spooky. Mm -hmm. Right? Now let's, get, let's get the one-handed catches out of the way early. <laughs> because we see this all the time on the Sports Center Top 10. He's double teamed. He will have a defender grab his face mask and yank it down while he's making the one-handed to catch and by the way nice throw so if he's so big fast strong skilled why in the world would Nebraska 
leave a safety all by himself against him running vertically down the field? Well, the answer is they don't want to, but they have to. They want this corner to stay back and help cover number four. But instead, he is forced to stay wide because Chip Kelly, the offensive coordinator, sends a corner out out there, so he can't help inside. That leaves Smith on that poor safety. And this safety already knows, okay, I am in terrible trouble here. And, and by the way, nice throw. Mm -hmm. That's an unfair advantage that he doesn't need, but they give it to him anyway. And then defenses have to pick their poison. You've got 10 Buckeyes packed in tight. you got to put 10 defenders in front so you don't get blasted into the end zone. But that leaves the world's loneliest Hawkeye trying to cover Smith. But they don't expect him to have to cover him every time. What the defense is expecting is that Will Howard can't continue to drop these dimes right where Smith can use all that physical ability to make the plays. So it's not like, okay, we're going to stop him with one short defender. The thing is, can Will Howard continue to do this? So that context of helping him him with unfair advantages from a scheme standpoint and precision passing by the quarterbacks makes this guy incredibly hard to cover and he will steal your candy. And the answer you <laughs> talked about stealing candy is not what we want to go with on we don't Halloween want that. right now. No, he does. No. He steals candy. But that, though he does steal candy, what I do want to, the point I want to make is there's been a lot of talk about Will Howard and the South State offense. We wanted so much more. But to your point, all those plays you showed, all those passes were precise. They were pinpointing. So there's somewhat of an advantage that Ohio State does have with those receivers, but also with the accuracy of their quarterback. Mm. What about running back, Sam? So running backs, this one's close, right? Because yeah. both teams have great running backs in their, mm. in their backfield. But I give the edge to Ohio State, to Travion Henderson and to Quinshawn Judkins. Why? Because I think they have the ability to make the big play more often. Now, yes, I understand. Penn State has more rushing yards. They average more rushing yards than Ohio State does. When it comes to big plays, these stretch plays, these outside zone plays, you'll see both Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson have 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 yard touchdowns. And so I think that big play ability gives Ohio State the slight edge, though both teams have a great ability to run the ball. All right. I mean, they might steal some candy as well, too. <laughs> All right. Finally, defense and special teams, Trevor. Well, I think especially with the pass rush, Penn State has an advantage. Abdul Carter and those guys are exceptional at pressuring the quarterback, getting him off his spot. But also, Ohio State's offensive line on the left side is in disarray right now. Their starting left tackle, Josh Simmons, was hurt against Oregon. Backup went in against Nebraska. They struggled to run the ball and protect the passer. Then that backup got hurt at the end of the Nebraska game, mm -hmm. and they moved the left guard out to left tackle. They put in a new left guard. What they do at, on that side of the line is going to affect this game. All right. Well, there's a lot to pay attention to in this one. That's just one of many. Have you ever gone to a tailgate and realized you don't have anything to contribute to the discussion? Well, we here on College Football Live have something for you, and we call it Tailgate Tips, where we give you some necessary tips of knowledge to sound smarter and impress your friends every Saturday. You can thank us later. It's that time for tailgate tips, and Amy made me look like I'm somewhat athletic. So, all right, Trevor, what is your tailgate tip? This is the first time that Army has played Air Force when Army was ranked at the time. Mm -hmm. And you think, well, wait a minute, wasn't Army highly ranked in the 40s and early 50s? Yes, they were, but Air Force didn't exist until after World War II as its own entity. Mm -hmm. It was the Army Air Corps until then. They didn't play for the first time until 19. 59. This is the first time the Knights are ranked in this game. I love that. That's a, that's a huge that's a huge tip. Yep. I didn't know that, so that's look great for me. My tip is the Indiana Hoosiers. They're 8-0, and they're the first FBS team to be 8-0 uh, since, what was it, 1998, Kansas State did it. And so 8-0 oh. without trailing. So not just 8-0, but 8-0 and haven't trailed all season since 1998, Kansas State. So that's big time offense. Ooh. You love to see it. Okay, my tailgate tip is just stirring the pot, okay. all right? Before the Ohio State takes on Penn State, here why this game is personal for Will Howard. I'm stoked. I'm stoked. I cannot wait. It's uh, it's going to be a homecoming for me. I grew up a Penn State fan. I wanted to go there my whole life. They didn't think I was good enough. But uh, I guess we'll see next week if I was. I'd say he's I'd say he's pretty good enough, uh, but you know, we'll see this weekend. All right, here's one for the road and this one's for you, Trevor. Uh, you'll appreciate this. BYU Athletic Director uh, has a history of uh, epic Halloween oh, costumes. Geez. That's Tom Homo. Yeah, he, wow. We were teammates at BYU. He yeah. could dress up like a defensive back all the time. I'll tell you what though, yeah. if that's a live parrot, that he just strapped to his shoulder, extra points. <laughs> I thought you were the pair. What about the snake? I well, think it's just the whole thing. That's just one of them. There's multiple ones. There's multiple ones.
All right, for Sam, Trevor, I'm Victoria. Enjoy your games this weekend. Happy Halloween. Thanks for watching.